everybody, I'm Zach and I like movies. And today I'm back with another entry in my Letterbox Criterion Challenge for the year. And uh, this one, uh, this was, I went with prop number 43, which is to watch a movie from the 1940s. And I went with the 1943 movie, Le Corbeau, from director Henri Georges Clouseau. Now, I think Clouseau, uh, Clouseau is still most famous for his 1950s masterpiece thriller, The Wages of Fear, which is a fantastic movie about desperate men transporting a dangerous amount of nitroglycerin in big trucks along rocky paths. That absolutely, absolute masterpiece in its own right, which was also, also remade into another masterpiece by Billy Friedkin named Sorcerer. It's absolutely great. You should definitely watch both of those. But uh, I really think this was also another uh, another one of Clouseau's great works. He was he 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 was a real fun. He had a real fondness for these uh, German expressionist stylings and, uh, and had had a had a penchant for thrillers by both with Wages of Fear, another movie he made, Diabolique, and uh, again with, with Le Corbeau, also which translates to The Raven. Now this was. Uh, this is a uh, uh, interesting to talk about because this was uh, this is a movie that almost killed his career. In fact, definitely did ruin his reputation in France for a while. No, and I, I will I will get to that. But first, I want to want to just sort of sum it up. This uh, the Raven is about a small town, particularly focusing on one Doctor Remy Germain, and Germain becomes the focus of a pretty nasty libelous campaign uh, of poison to pen letters that are accusing him of, of having affairs and performing abortions. <laughs> and they are they are all signed by an anonymous penman, the Raven. They're even like signed with a picture of a little raven. It's kind of cute actually. And uh, what's in and what's interesting the way that the movie movie uh, uh builds suspicion around him is the way that he's uh, interacting with uh, other key figures of the town like like first, firstly firstly Jermaine is not a very pleasant person to be around he's we actually are introduced to him in the opening uh, with him wiping blood off of his hands because he he helped another mother he helped a, a, yet another mother with childbirth but he couldn't save the baby and that's like the third time this month and so he's and uh, he he makes you know, like he goes he goes around he like he like passes a, a schoolyard and he the, he like absolutely does not want anything to do with these kids. He hates kids. Um, he's uh, he's very prickly to be around, um, and even when he and it, when, even when he's like doing his duties as a surgeon and like being an, a doctor of sorts, he's and he, he makes a house call to this girl Denise that he that he thinks is faking being sick just so she can try and flirt with him, which he goes along with really as a means to condescend to her, like. <laughs> Like, like, oh yeah, like I'm letting you, you um, seduce me. Not that you're actually seducing me. I'm just making like he, he's he's kind of a prick, <laughs> honestly. And all, uh, and not only that, but he also has romantic interests with a with Laura, who is a married woman. So not, it's not like the accusation he gets from the first Raven letter is entirely wrong. There's like misconstrued mis uh, miscons what's the word. Uh, uh, things being misconstrued and just like exaggerated, uh, but uh, they get they uh, the rumors start to fly pretty fast and and uh, and uh, uh, even the and even the way that he like uh, a, a close friend uh, that he thinks like a, uh, if I remember it was an English professor of some sorts uh, that the way and uh, uh, the way that the the, the town bishop talk talks uh, interacts with him uh, things get very very heated because this is a town that is very isolated from the outside world so the world so it just becomes a microcosm of society and even French society and uh, there's and uh, uh, even just more like off these more like a tertiary characters that pop in they start they start interacting weird with him like there's this 15 year old girl who uh, she has like a, an interesting scam going where like every week she gets like a loan of a couple of like a like a hundred dollars or something from like every other adult in the town and every time she's on screen she's playing it very innocently you know she's very she's very bashful and doe-eyed she's 
bouncing a little ball, uh, which feels like she feels like a callback to Fritz Lane's M, which I, which I think is interesting, and like the way that, uh, uh, the way that her scam, the way that her scam kind of gets, uh, not only revealed but also sort of like waved away. It feels like the the town the town sort of like just letting letting these uh, letting certain things pass pass them by, but letting other letting other accusations just like really hang in the air. There and it gets things get worse when there are more letters start coming and they just start being uh, targeted to everybody else in the town and they, they get really really nasty too. Um, they like e e like they they just start dropping uh, seemingly at random and very quickly too. Um, they become more they become more targeted, really just to like cause a panic and generate more and more hostility. There's a and uh, and uh, sadly they even prove disastrous and like one like honestly does lead to a suicide. It's very right. and that but that suicide uh, leads to this like spectacular scene of the town like mourning the the raven's victim and this in this wonderful funeral scene there's this large horse-drawn carriage that's decorated with like hundreds and hundreds of flowers and it's walking through the village and you know um the victim's mother is you know just weeping and everyone, everyone's very mournful and sorrowful and uh then a letter falls out from one of the funeral wreaths onto the ground and Everybody just does not want to pick it up. They just like there's these great low angle shots of everyone noticing it on the ground and directly avoiding picking it up. But eventually, you know, one of the, the curious kid opens it and ooh, it's it's very it's, and and uh, that that the it gets it gets so much more suspicious and just so much more nasty, like like outwardly nasty, just threatening and hostile when Mer when uh, a, a a nurse or uh, uh, Mary, Mary who is Laura's sister actually uh, she gets accused of being the raven and she she's pursued in these alley nude throughout this alleyway and it's very it's a very noirish uh, style the way that Clouseau shoots this uh, shoots her being chased because you never see who is chasing her, but you only he you hear the sounds of the angry mob just sort of getting louder and louder. And uh, you have these great canted camera angles and these exaggerated wide shots. It's very, it's very noirish. And uh, she, she like le and uh, she like is chased out of this like very gothic looking hospital through this alleyway, and and into her and uh, like when she makes it back to her place, it's just absolutely destroyed. And she's looking at her at her reflection through this like shattered mirror great stuff absolutely absolutely this this movie r does look amazing um and and yeah and uh, like i said earlier like he's there's a lot of expressionist uh shadows going around and, um uh one of uh, some one of my favorite uh one of my favorite shots um uh Germain says goodbye to a friend who's like walking down the stairs and he, his shadow just gets larger and larger as he like just walks down and tips his hat back up to him him. there's and another and there's another scene where like they just sort of like like directly interact with the light with the only lighting source you know they, they they literally bump the lamp they just like like kick this like hanging light bulb and it's just swinging back and forth and it's just it's so good i love this um and uh, and yeah the host the hostility of the town just becomes so so naked so nakedly mistrustful and just and like if like and like the the, the interact the interactions the more the more that the paranoia sets in and just grows and metastasizes and uh it's and uh even even the when even when people get get their own raven letter it's more ever they almost sort of just like don't don't take it seriously They're like oh dude, all, all the lies being said about me are ridiculous but all the ones said about other people i'm just going to take wholeheartedly <laughs> and uh and uh it feels it it feels much much less the town being corrupted by these letters and more that the corruption or that was already in the town is being revealed healed and this actually did cause a lot of controversy when it was released at least fiercely fiercely controversial because this was made 
in 1940s France during Nazi occupation. Uh, in fact, Clouseau, uh, it was, uh, Clouseau made this under a German-run production company called Continental Films. And uh, people and uh, people sort of took, and, uh, when it was released, people sort of took it as, oh, this was made with Nazi money. So, obvi and obviously, and he's uh, looking at, and uh, it's like portraying this like, a average French town as like, oh, 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 oh Clouseau's just saying that all the French people are corrupt and terrible. They're, they're, they're terrible people and untrustworthy. And this movie is like just ha hating all French people, and he was at, and uh, from the fallout of that, he was banned. Uh, Clouseau got banned from making French films, uh, making films in France on the government, and, and and Le Corbeau itself was buried for a little over twenty years. Years actually, it's very, and I think with, and I think with dis with distance and with reappraisal uh, from other uh, and. Uh, uh, proclamation from one of the directors like Billy Friedkin, um, uh, people saw uh, saw that it wasn't uh, uh, that it was more anti-informant. Uh, there, uh, one of the one of the Nazis' favorite favorites uh, uh, methods of gener of uh, generating fear in town in uh, communities and these towns was was by anonymous letters, letters you know just people accusing others of being political enemies, Jews, who's and. I think, and I think, I think the distance does help, because this movie is just a fascinating portrait of of paranoia, fostering further paranoia, and how the fear, uh, how that fear corrupts and uh, destroys uh, communities. And this could really just be any town. Uh, and uh, it it is kind of a, uh, it is kind of a, uh, not that it like. Uh, is analogous anyway to like uh, our to like the way that we like sort of let our own hysterias and paranoias uh, carry away with us but there is something to be said about uh, always there's always something relevant uh, about about people feeling being uh, overlooked by some faceless entity that they that uh, they feel can destroy their lives can destroy their friendships, can destroy their communities and connections with their friends, with their neighbors at any time, and it—it's a grim. It's it, it feels pretty grim. It's it is a it is a like very bitter little fable. I don't I don't think it's like really like I don't think it's uh, I think I think we can like take some lessons from this and maybe and the fine and with the final shot I feel. That there is sort of a sort of a grimness you can acknowledge, but also uh, a little more optimism in what in a, a little more optimism. There, there is. It's not as bitterly grim as it would probably make it out to be, because the, because the, and the movie itself is is actually uh, 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 sardonically funny in parts, parts. And I do I do highly recommend this. I thought this was fantastic and. And again, I, I am me, so I have to recommend other stuff. Where is it? Here it is. Ugh. Have to recommend you also seek out the wages of fear because this is absolutely a very, very digestible, uh, very, very intense uh, nail biting thriller, and uh, and uh, that one, that one's probably a little more uh, uh, accessible. In terms of like you know just the press, but uh, Le, Le Corbeau is absolutely, absolutely something that you should that you should seek out. I thought it was a uh, uh, very uh, very beautifully shot. It was a uh, it was again surprisingly funny and very it it really did kind of get under my skin a little about about all this and all this anonymity and this like animosity and yeah just paranoia like something about just something about paranoia. In, film, in stories like really 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 gets me going it's really good you know it just gets a gets a lot of the hits hits a lot of the sweet spots but uh, yeah I would uh, highly highly recommend this I thought uh, again I thought it was great and uh, I will continue to watch movies uh, I really I really gotta try to uh, uh, get further on a little further on in the criterion challenge I'm not sure what I'll watch next, but some of these uh, some of these might take a minute.
especially, especially considering uh, some of these are a little more uh, uh, avant-garde than a uh, and a little hard to might be a little hard to elaborate. But I don't know. I, I'll, I'll, I promise. I promise to make these uh, more often, and uh, I will promise to be watching more movies, and I hope you do too. And I will see you later.